Well, welcome back to Lorne, part three of a fucking alpha demo. Isn't that great? We're doing multi-part series on a goddamn demo. And frankly, it's of a game that's not really doing well on Kickstarter. It's something that I could have even told the... Some, someone throwing up over here? Bulimia is bad. No, eating. But yeah, it's something I would have told the developers. If you're going for indie horror and you go to Kickstarter, it probably... Yeah, whatever. It, it probably won't do well. It's, uh... Oh, hey. He, he didn't eat this, though. It's something I could... Uh, I told the... The indie dev behind... What was it? Faith? Faith? Yeah, Faith. I was talking to the Faith developer. I, I, I told him quite reasonably so that... If he's trying to get a, a, a project kickstarted, just, just don't bother. You need to have a huge backing... Huge marketing, huge advertising, which in itself would cost thousands of dollars just to get noticed, just to get more money on Kickstarter. So the only way to really go through is you need to pump money to get money back. But even then, the advertiser system is breaking, and you can't really necessarily advertise by paying money and hoping to get... Oh, I thought that skull was a thing hiding there. You can't really pay money in hopes that you get a similar or even boosted return. Like, say... If I paid $50 in ad revenues for this video, $50 to YouTube, to Google. If I paid them 50 bucks to advertise $50 worth of advertising on other people's channels and other people's videos, the turn up, the ratio of how much I would earn would never be over than $50 worth of profit. Which is why the algorithm of ad-based anything is sort of going downhill now. The system probably will change in the next five or ten years. Um, but yeah, so it's like, it's a, to become noticed as an indie horror game, it's a niche audience, and you need to have... It's like, when, when you think horror, it's like the only thing that really gets a lot of views is things like Five Nights at Freddy's. It's things that attract kids. Fucking, like, the things that kids love these days. Minecraft, Roblox, and FNAF. And there's usually a similarity between them all. Roblox and Minecraft more so. You know, it's blocky. It appeases a Lego-like uh, aesthetic and visual system. Uh, its sense of mystery and or, you know, development is up to the imagination of the... the minds of the kids who fucking play it. I don't like this area. But, and in horror-wise, it has to be like FNAF, or it has to be like, um... Oh, what's the other game I have in mind? Shit. Um, also, there's just like a hiding hole or something? Weird. Is, uh... Fuck, is Five Nights at Freddy's... What was the other popular horror game before FNAF? I don't know, fucking Outlast. Outlast strangely did well for a first-person horror game. Normally, that never happens. Only Amnesia... It probably was because of YouTubers, if anything. Like, if no YouTuber picked up Amnesia, and Amnesia didn't become some kind of staple of horror games that most channels need to play, then I don't think Amnesia would have sold as well. Amnesia, and the thanks to the popularity or the amount of sales it did get, and the renown that it got, was only probably thanks to YouTubers. If it weren't for the internet, if it weren't for YouTube, Amnesia probably wouldn't have gone anywhere. Where am I fucking going? Probably this way. Outside of that, as I was saying, yeah, ad revenue, it's just, um... You, you can't... The, the whole point I'm trying to say is, like, Kickstarter, you can't advertise indie horror. It, it, it won't really do well at all. Another message thing. Let alone, I don't think even me playing this series will get a lot of views on YouTube, because it's like, no one has heard of this? It may look pretty. With flesh as my paper. A again, you guys can pause and read that if you want to. Um... I don't know, it's just... First-person horror games, it's, maybe it's just a dying breed. It's not as cool anymore. Wait, is this where I came from? No, didn't I come from this way? No, yeah, yeah, I came from that way. So what's under here first? But yeah, I mean, uh, oh, Iron Spike, I see you. It's, it looks like it's floating. It's made of iron, but it's floating. That's cool. If it was sunk on the bottom, it might be harder to see unless it really, really shined. But nah, 
Finishing up the topic before I get off topic or before I go off in tangents some more is first person horror is a complicated process. But this game, it's got barely any backers on the Kickstarter. It's, it's sort of sad. Okay. Oh, Ogre Dude. What's up? What's up, bruh? You hidden behind this jail cell? Oh, wait. It's, it's not an ogre. It's a ghostly person. Or it's a ghostly ogre person? What? Why are you invisible? It's Cyclops, too, Ubu. That's weird. He's just... He's just standing there, and he's invisible. Are, are, is this like fucking, you know, like Doom on the Hardest Difficulty, where they're partially invisible? That brings me back. I don't know. The topic, I think, first person... I think I just need a 2LDR. Two, two first person horrors don't seem to be something that are easily... Like, you have to become viral. You have to become lucky. If you're not lucky, you're fucked. I don't think this game's gonna be one of those things that gets lucky. There's no sticky factors. I can say I like the aesthetics, I like medieval horror. Let's just let, let's just leave him there. The enemy AI seems to be a bit screwy as well. The other question is like where the fuck am I going? Iron spikes, two of them. Like, the one reason why I wouldn't play through this game is there isn't a sense of purpose. Like, I was talking about anime in the last episode. You need a sense of urgency, a sense of purpose. A reason why I can't get into Diablo clones, for another instance, is because in Diablo's instance, story-wise, I care about what happens to the Diablo universe. Playing Diablo 1, 2, and 3 has made me attached to the universe of Diablo. What happens in it interests me. But you need to think of a new IP needs to make it so you need to give a fuck about the universe. You need to be given by the developer a sense of reasoning as to why you should give a fuck if some kind of superpower monster threatens the planet. Why should you care? And if a game can't sort of, you know, let you feel that sense of, oh, well, here's why you should care. And Final Fantasy, they, they sort of did it right all the time. Typically. Typically. But... Game developers don't seem to really understand that, in my opinion. It's sort of like a lost thing, or... It's hard to explain, actually. But... I always have a feeling if I know a game has achieved it. It's really easy to see in anime, which is why I brought it up as an analogy. But as for... Games? You don't know until the game developer, you know, puts it in the game saying, Oh, here's when you should care. Here's the plot twist that makes it so it's all for this reason. I just want a different change of pace in this. I want... I want evidence why I should care about the game, basically. Door open. And a door open somewhere, and I don't know fucking where. I sort of don't like that. Door open. Where, where did it... I don't remember ever seeing a dead end with a door. What I don't like in my criticism would be this is too many mazes. It relies on mazes. So I have to make my way back. I have to... I think that was the dead end. I have to make my way back. I have to find out where the door is. Um, where, where a fucking door was. This dude's stuck and I don't give a fuck about you. I don't know. I was gonna skip ahead and hopefully find my way. Well, it looks like this... Maybe I... Maybe I... I didn't come through here. I know that for a fact. So hopefully... Or anything here? Yeah, there's something here. Can you come? Yep. Why is it invisible? Oh, jeez. Um. 
Well, this isn't cool. I'm fucking stuck. Oh. Great. I can't fucking move. And I'm getting whacked. I'm close to giving up. Let's try going over there again. Why are there invisible... In, invisible giant baby things? I, I just don't even know. Oh, wait. What? Oh, whoa. What? Ah, oh, jeez. I don't like the looks of this. Uh, I'm, I'm skipping ahead. Oh, there's that dude that killed me. I just don't know if there's, like, a button over here. I guess I have to try to sneak around this dude. Oh, oh geez. It's not got hit this time. As, um... He can't go through the door. I'm gonna see if I can get around him. Oh, I gotta hope there's two buttons per level, then go back to the main area and hope the main gate is open. If not, then I sort of give up. Oh, jeez. Alright, fuck it. I died. I, I, I'm already sort of tired of it. I'm, I'm just, I'm just done. I, I, I give up. I, I literally, I, I, I literally give up. Um, all my criticism, it, it's still there. Like, I'd want the game to succeed so they can try to prove themselves, but for me in particular, it's hard to prove me that there's a point to all of it. I like the the concept of the story and a lot of things about it but the level design to me is atrocious it's like at the very least even when you think amnesia amnesia you were in a fucking castle but it never felt like it was a complete fucking maze type labyrinth if it's a dungeon sure i grew up on fucking dungeon crawlers i grew up playing games where it's literally a maze you have to figure it out but even then i didn't get tired of it i'm so i'm fine with mazes but it's just for things like these i don't think there's an excuse to use mazes. You can only use mazes if it's the purpose is psychological warfare or you are a dungeon crawler. This isn't. It's medieval setting. You're in a cave in a prison and it just so happens there's a lot of fucking intersections and pathways and the reason they exist is just to fucking confuse you and to extend the duration of a game. I don't like that kind of excuse of why it's built that way. Because every time, you'd have to think, everywhere I went, if you watched part 1, 2, and 3, the problem was, I go to an intersection, a fucking crossroad, and then there'd be different pathways, which lead to different problems, different traps, different enemies. But the, er, the enemies were just like big giant flesh baby, or invisible giant flesh baby, or tiny flesh babies that crawled and hurt me. It, it doesn't really show much of the demo. It's not a good demo, in my opinion. And the fact that there's intersections and pathways that lead out and they're mazes, it's nonsensical in terms of architectural, it's in, in anything level design wise, it's bad. I'm just leaving it here, hopefully you enjoyed it anyways, if you want to try it yourself, the demo is available, it's on the Kickstarter too, if you're interested, if you're interested, it's there. Outside of that, I hope you enjoyed though anyways, and my funny uh, analogies and com comparisons, if you did and you enjoyed, please leave a like down. Hit that subscribe button, make a my fluff subscriber, and hit that bell notification down below for updates on my videos, and until the next time. And also, yeah, th thank you for watching. <laughs> until the next time! I don't like this, I, I really don't, I mean... Hey, it's that noise from fucking Bloodborne, the cleric beast. Let's run, let's run, let's run, let's 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 run. Let's run.